What am I doing? How did I even get here? I feel like I just woke up from my life to find myself in a terrible nightmare. Is this even my life? Is this my hand wiping sweat from my brow? Is this my hand? Oh God. <laughs> I actually wish I believed in God. If I believed in God, maybe I could stop myself. Maybe I'd have more respect for life and death. Then I could just leave things the way they are. But no. What was that? A mouse. Not an indigenous mouse either. That's a lab mouse. How'd you get out? I'll have to catch you soon. You won't last a day outside. Not amongst the hungry cats of Buenos Aires. Maybe in a bit, but not now. I have to finish. It won't work if I don't finish. Probably won't work anyway, but... Oh God. What if it doesn't work? What if it does? Oh, if I could just go back and choose differently. If I just stayed in Toronto. Hell, I could have even gone to some nice small town in the middle of nowhere. Maybe in Saskatchewan even. And just opened a... Damn it. God damn it. I swear to fulfill, to the best of my ability and judgment, this covenant, I will respect the hard-won scientific gains, come on, of those physicians in whose step I walk, come on, god damn it, come on, come on, god damn it. There you go, come on now. There you go. You got it. What difference does it make? Funny how different my life was last year. How simple. And now, thousands of miles from home, doing such questionable things. And yet, on the verge of understanding so much my god, how did this even happen? Where'd they go? Where'd who go? Oh, sorry, I was just thinking out loud. Oh, uh, no need to apologize, doctor. I'm sorry, do I know you? <laughs> you know, if it weren't for the A's and the sorries, you guys would sound just like Americans. Hey, I didn't mean to offend you, son. You didn't offend me. I just am curious how you know I'm a doctor. <laughs> Shit, kid. I've only been a doctor for, what, ten minutes, and you're already using it like it's your middle name. I gotta go. Hey, hold on, Dr. Hines. So you do know me? Well, we've never met before, but I know a lot about you. I know you speak German, and you're a brand spanking new doctor. I know you're looking forward to practice, but what you really love is research. All right, so you're at the ceremony. You heard my speech. Look, I really got to go. I'm supposed to be meeting my family right now. I know that, too. And I know where they're at. So let me speak my piece, and I'll bring you to them. Deal? And how do you know that? <laughs> oh, boy, I just saw them leave ahead of you. Saw where they went. Come on, I'll take you right to them. Just let me talk while we walk. Is it a deal? Fine. Deal. So, I came a long way to meet you, son. I work for a small, private, but very wealthy university in Buenos Aires. Now, I came because we're in a little bit of a pickle, and somebody with your very particular set of skills would be perfect to help us out of it. So you came to offer me a job? Well, hell, boy, you want to jump right into bed already? I'm sorry, it's just I'm late to see my family. I'm just messing with you. Hell, I appreciate that you want to get to the point. Yes, I did come to hire you. You see, a few days ago, one of our main researchers, an old-school German epidemiologist, passed away unexpectedly, and he kept a whole mess of notes, but they're all in German. We need them translated into English. Why don't you just get a translator? Well, to be frank, his lab is a little bit of a mess, and he just kind of kept his notes all over the place. Now, we can't tell what's an actual note and what's a shopping list, know what I mean? We need a doctor to figure it all out for us. Look, I'm not a housekeeper. And you would not be paid like one. That's the amount that we're willing to pay. Holy. Wow. So you're interested? Uh, yeah. I'm interested. I couldn't afford not to be. 
With that kind of money, I could pay off all my medical school debt in just over a year. Everything happened so quickly. It was just a blur, and then I was here. With the heat, and the humidity, and the noise. Welcome to Buenos Aires, Dr. Hines. And for months, it was boring as hell. And difficult as well. It turned out that the dead German epidemiologist, Dr. Hubert Weiss, was actually neither. The work was all virology, not epidemiology like the American told me. Of course, all that was a lie, too, but I didn't know that then. All I knew at the time was that I didn't know any more about virology than I did epidemiology. I mean, I'm a neurosurgeon. What the hell do I know about viruses and host defenses and the statistics of carriers or whatever? Truth is, I was just a grossly overpaid translator. But I wasn't complaining. Not for that kind of money. Just kind of bored. How's it going, partner? Jesus, man, you scared the piss out of me. Oh, I'm sorry about that. How does a man your size move so quietly? Oh, I don't move so quiet. You just gotta be listening. Well, what can I do for you? Actually, I figured we should go get something to eat and talk about your progress. What do you think? <sighs> that sounds like a wonderful idea. But it wasn't. I mean, in one way, it was. But... Which are the key events in a sequence that determine any particular outcome? I mean, if I hadn't gone to the restaurant that night, would I be wrapping up the job by now and getting ready to head back home? Or were the events of that night inevitable? Would I have met her whether or not I'd been there? Would I have met her if I hadn't come to Argentina at all? None of that matters now, obviously. What is done <laughs> is done. What happened, happened. <laughs> You can't deny it, can you? Hell yes, I can. We're an entire country. There are more people in the state of California than in your entire country. So population is what gives the country validity? Well, I'm obviously not including your country, Elena. I mean, hell, if World War II hadn't happened, you guys would have double the population you got today. But even then, we'd have half as many as Canada. Yeah, but you got people all over the world. Most of your citizens are diaspora. Such big words from a man with such a tiny intellect. Please excuse my rude American friend. I'm Ilana. Well, hell, excuse me. I thought y'all knew each other already. Well, now we do. No thanks to you. Well, shit. All I'm saying is that... Wait, you know what? Actually, you're right. It ain't a matter of population. It's a matter of money. And if the United States didn't spend so much money on their armed forces, the world would be a hell of a lot less safe and secure than it is today. Sure. Pinochet, the Shah, even the Mujahideen. Great examples of American-funded safety and security. Well, I think it's about time I turned in. I got this, though. As promised. I'll see you tomorrow, Doc. Want to see the progress you're making in there? You're a doctor? I am. But you are so young. Not as young as I look. And for me, it's the other way. You're younger than you look. In my field of work, you age very quickly. What field is that? Knowing things. Terrible things. What do you mean? If I told you, the knowledge would curse you just as it has me. I feel sometimes like... Like I'm at the end of my life. As if I've lived so long and know so much that it would be nice to fall asleep one night and never wake up. Excuse me, doctor, I, <laughs> I don't mean to be so morbid. No, it's fine. I mean, you say those things and I don't know, maybe it's just the wine, but I am so sorry. I wish I could help. I wish... Thank you, Doctor. That's very sweet of you. But what is it? What happened? Can I help? Can I... No, thank you. But so many things happened. It's so long ago. There's nothing to be done except, well, what I do. But thank you. You are very sweet. <laughs> you are an interesting man, Dr. Albert. Sincere and sweet. Honest. I'm sorry, Doctor. It's been a long day and I'm very tired. Could you take me home now? Sure, I can walk you home. No problem. I didn't ask you to walk me home. Oh. Sure. 
From then on, every moment I wasn't translating those horrible notebooks, if Alana was in town, we were together. Not that I had to be with her or anything, and not that she had to be with me. We just were. It's as if there had never been a time we weren't together. It was so easy and light and fun. And when she was out of town, which was about half the time, I just worked twice as much to make the time go quicker. Even though we didn't speak over the phone when she was out of town, I never worried about her. I wouldn't yearn any more for her than I would when I was with her. It was like she was with me always. We never spoke about her future together, but we knew. I still never learned what it was she did. I could tell it had something to do with the Israeli government and that it was probably at least a little bit dangerous. But she was so confident. It just never dawned on me that something bad might happen to her. Until it did. When I was about 80% done with the job, about 11 months in by then, Alana had been out of town for a few days, or so I thought. Put some clothes on. Something going on at the lab. So what's going on? Somebody's in there. How do you know? I was walking by and I saw them go in. Whoa, is that really necessary? Albert, we don't know what's in there. No, we kind of do. I'm only a few months away from finishing all the notebooks. Quiet. Look. I don't see anything. Shh. I'm going in. What? Stop right there! I'm armed! <gasps> Are you okay? Hello? <laughs> Ilana. What? Albert, stop him! Uh, uh, uh. <sighs> Where'd he go? Where'd he go, Albert? I think he went that way. Are you sure? Yeah. He definitely went that way. You should go inside and make sure they didn't get anything. It's a big deal. It's just boring research papers on virology. That's not all that's in there, Albert. You just go back in there and make sure everything's okay. What the hell was she doing there? And what was the American protecting? Something was definitely going on, and Ilana was hurt. Ilana? Ilana! And what the hell had she been looking for anyway? Hi, you reached Ilana. Leave a message. Ilana, where are you? What the hell is going on? Please, call me. Are you okay? I'm worried about you. And I just hope you're okay. I wanted to go to her apartment to see if she went there, but I needed to know what the hell she was looking for and what the American was talking about. So I went back in. Oh my God. What the hell? Oh my God. All those months, nearly a year, and I had no idea that doorway was just a few feet away or that that dungeon was underneath me the whole time. What the hell? It smelled like death and filth, like rot. And I couldn't figure out what was causing the horrible stench until I found them. Oh my God. Hello? Are you okay? Hello? Jesus. Christ, are you guys okay? They didn't even seem to realize I was there. They didn't seem conscious at all. And then I realized that the doctor died nearly a year ago. And these guys have been down here that whole time. How the hell did they survive here so long? Nobody to get them water or food. <gasps> Holy shit! Klaus Werner? Which of the events that brought me there could I have skipped to avoid being in that situation? And if I hadn't come to Argentina at all, would Alana have seduced whomever else they sent? And if I had the ability to go back and do it again, to make different decisions so that I wouldn't ever have come to Argentina, so that I wouldn't ever have met Alana. Would I do it all again?